What is going on guys? It is Trifecta J here, back with a new series just in time for March Madness, a new NCAA Basketball 10 Dynasty with the Eastern Washington Eagles. This is a team that will be coached by Daryl Francis, the new head coach of the Eagles. Excited to get this series underway. Should be a lot of fun. Definitely started to figure out this game a little better. You can see a couple of choices. No coach firing, no new coach offers. It's definitely going to be a tough rebuild for Eastern Washington. This is a team that I edited the roster to be completely mine. And we'll also have a bunch of different rule changes here. At least in the slider set. Found I feel like what will end up being a good slider set. I have a better idea for this series than I did in the past. We're going to basically be doing one game per episode. Simming in between. And just picking up the big games in general. You can see some of the ratings. For the slider set, I feel like I've played a few games with this, and it's definitely played a lot better than the normal one. It produces challenging games, but also realistic stats. So, like I said, this is a brand new roster that I created. It's not their roster in real life. Just thought this would give me more of a chance to be more invested in this team right away, along with just create my own universe. So you can see we are led by Jerron Dunbar, definitely by far our best player. Then you have Hunter Campbell, and a couple other starters who aren't awful, but overall this team it's going to be a tough year one for sure. They're projected to finish last in the Big Sky Conference. There are nine teams in the conference, so a ninth place finish for us. Northern Colorado, Sacramento State, Weber State, Idaho State, Montana, Northern Arizona, and Portland State along with Montana State are in our conference. You can see our schedule opening against Portland at home. So that should be an interesting game then against Green Bay at Oregon State at Cleveland or at Colgate against Cleveland State then we get a conference play at Montana Northern Arizona Montana State so overall not the toughest schedule book for a team of our caliber it definitely probably warrants and it'll be a very tough year for us so for the training we move on most of it's going to be focused in the backcourt on shooting while the front court's main focus is on defense trying to get better there and then a little bit of shooting and offense and then the split between those, most of it's going to go to the starters. We have to get some difference makers on the team in general other than Jerron Dunbar. Looking at the team preview, you can see by far the best player is Jerron Dunbar. Overall, the team not very highly rated, a ninth conference prediction. And we have six available scholarships. So looking at the recruiting goals, we need to sign a center, some C-rated prospects overall, and then an average potential rated recruit. And look at the shortlist. So far, we have 25 players for the season. Otis Wilkins is very interesting, Leon Postel was Mr. Basketball in his state, and just a few nice guys, not very many highly rated guys, two star was the highest it went, and guys they were highly interested in us, I basically looked at the guys who were highly interested, and just had that good interest in our pipeline and outside of our pipeline as well, and those are the 25 we came up with. So now more of an in-depth look at the roster, you can see there are actually some pretty good athletes on the team. But overall, there are not very many difference makers outside of Jerron Dunbar. He is really our only offensive threat for the most part. Chance Renfro coming off the bench could be a nice shooter, along with Cameron Tyson. Does have some good scoring ability. And then down low, not the worst overall. And then we do have uh, Robbie Ellis and Hunter Campbell, who are pretty decent rebounders. But now we move into a little Midnight Madness basketball, an exhibition to really look at this team before we get the actual season underway. It'll be the starters against the backups. So five on five, we have 10 players on our team. So it ended up working out very evenly this year. You would expect the starters to win, but now we'll get underway. It'll be the backups to start out with the ball in the corner, being guarded by Jerron Dunbar, waiting, and then finds an open man. It's Isaiah Kane, who scores the first bucket. Now getting trapped is Xavier Smith, who has the ball stolen and down the floor. It is uh, Hunter Campbell on the bucket. It'll be Sam Hammond with the ball now bringing it up the floor. He cuts into the lane and up and in, and we're tied back up at four. Swinging the ball around, it is Kasim Graves with the ball. He goes down low, finds Xavier Smith, who is able to score the bucket, and it's six to four. Now back six six, tied with four and a half minutes left in the first half. Down low, Jerron Dunbar, a little hook shot, and he's got his first points of the day. Swinging the ball around, shot in the corner, no good, but it's rebounded and blocked. A good defensive possession for the white team. 
It's Smith with the ball. He passes it to Graves, who sets it up up top. And Isaiah Kane once again cutting to the basket and has six points early on. Pass to Chance Renfro. He's the best shooter on the team, at least pure shooter, and definitely could get some playing time because of that. Not many other shooters on this team, really. Dunbar with what a move that really shows what he can do. We're going to have to rely on him for most of our points this year, and hopefully he can lead us to a good season. Renfro once again knocks down the three-pointer this time, and it'll be 15-11. Under a minute left in the first half, trying to drive it down low. It'll be Hunter Campbell on the bucket. It'll be Cameron Tyson with the ball. He gets trapped, throws it down low, and Robbie Ellis is able to score it. It will be tied at 15 going into halftime. A good showing from the backups. It'll be Graves driving down low, misses, able to get his own rebound. It's saved by the red team, passes it to Renfro, gets a man jumping, and knocks down the jumper for the two-point lead. Renfro with the ball once again, passing it up the floor to Xavier Smith. Behind the back, drives a great move from the backup point guard. Now pushing down the floor, it's Isaiah Kane to Xavier Smith, who will drive it once again, and another good take to the basket, as it's now a seven-point lead for the white team. Kicking it to Graves. He drives and is able to get the and one, but does miss the free throw. So four minutes left, a seven-point lead. Driving down low, and Renfro is able to score. He's played well so far today. The white team has the ball. Trevon Allen on defense. It'll be a drive and a score for Isaiah Kane. He's showing off some nice perimeter skills. Xavier Smith with the ball. He passes it, and it's Renfro for three. He knocks down the jumper, and it's a 14-point lead. This got away from the red team slash the starters in this second half. It'll be drawn Dunbar with the ball. He backs it out and knocks down the jumper to cut it to 12. But that will do it. You can see Isaiah Kane with eight rebounds on the day. Cameron Tyson, two points with three assists. You can see some nice highlights. A guy who definitely impressed me was Chance Renfro. He showed off some good shooting ability. Something that would definitely earn him playing time if he can keep up with that. As there are pretty much no other shooters outside of Dunbar on this team. But next we'll be looking at the overall stats for Midnight Madness. Drawn Dunbar with 10 points, 2 rebounds, 3 or 2 rebounds for the whole starting lineup. Not many assists for the red team though. A couple of blocks. You can see shooting 3 for 7, 0 for 2 on 3 pointers though. Then for the white team, Kasim Graves with 2 points, Chance Renfro with 12, 8 from Isaiah Kane, and 7 from Xavier Smith. So the backups really showed out more. Season actually starts as I said we'll start at home against Portland that will definitely be the first game we'll get to play but then I'm not gonna play every game I'm gonna probably try and pick seven ish games I would think for this first season to really try and get through it but which of these games on our schedule would you like to see me play I'm thinking maybe three two or three out of conference and then the rest in conference getting to know our conference rivals definitely could be fun but overall I'm definitely excited for this series if you are excited as well, leave a like down below. Leave your comments on the series, the team, and which teams you would like to see us play. But I hope you did enjoy, because I'm out.